Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Scott Luton. I'm with TalentStream, your host for today's session. We've got a home run speaker in Mark Preston, and we're glad to have you join us. So today's webinar is going to present a very practical introduction to visual management. As I mentioned, we're featuring Mark Preston today. He's one of our advisory board members and CEO of Lean Applications. So more about Mark in just a minute. So as I mentioned, Talent Streams your host today. Uh, this is part of our Talent Talent Stream Leadership Academy, which is a, a value-added offering for our, that our firm uh, presents to the marketplace. Uh, and what we do, we, we specialize in helping organizations find premier technical talent in the high-skilled manufacturing, engineering, and supply chain space. So if we can serve your organization in any way, please let us know. We'd love to have a conversation with you about your talent needs. So a few simple ground rules uh, that we uh, we hold for each webinar. If we'll flip to that next uh, slide there. So number one, all of our attendees will be on mute as we're looking to optimize the audio experience. Uh, we're recording today's session. Uh, number, with that said, though, let's make it as interactive as possible. So please do submit your questions via the chat toolbar or the raise your hand button. Please note, if you use the latter option, the raise your hand button, you will, be, uh, you will need to be connected uh, to a microphone. And number three, a PDF of today's presentation and the webinar recording will be sent out to each registrant after today's session. Okay, so let's share a little more information about our speaker today. Uh, Mark Preston is founder and CEO of Lean Applications. Mark has been driving change in manufacturing and sales environments for over 25 years, primarily using Lean. He's held leadership positions in companies such as TDK Electronics, Respironics, which is now Philips Healthcare, and Acuity Brands Lighting. At Acuity Brands, Mark led the, led the deployment of Lean across the Acuity supply chain, which included 16 plants and five distribution centers. He also rolled out 14 supplier development programs, which helped to optimize supplier performance. Currently, Mark is a Lean champion with the Association for Manufacturing Excellence, and he served as a keynote speaker for organizations across the country, including APIX, CSCMP, and MODEX, to name a few. All in all, Mark has a passion for teaching and sharing best practices with others. And with that said, here's Mark Preston. Good afternoon. Um, I know it's you won't get to see this beautiful face for long, but I did want you to know that there's a person behind these slides, and I'm glad to be sharing with you uh, this afternoon. Look forward to your questions at the end of this presentation, and hopefully you get as much out of Lean as I do, as well as the visual management tools that you can use along the way. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Um, the elimination of waste is, of course, the foundation of success when you, you talk about lean. And one of the biggest wastes as we talk about lean is waste of communication because many people do not understand. They have many different ways of thinking, but visual brings all that together. So as I look at elimination of waste, I really see it as um, the ways to eliminate waste in many different ways because no one has just one way of learning. So cross-functioning collaboratively, it should make a difference to our customers, make a difference by eliminating waste, and it demands excellence in everything we do. We want to deliver value to customers, number one, what they want, when they want it, where they want it, and without defects. So first I'd like to go over the lean principles. Um, the lean principles really, number one, is the main one, specify value through the eyes of the customer. Everything else rolls up to the value in the eyes of the customer. You can't have a business without really specifying and, and really understanding the value in your customers. In order to do that, you want to identify your value streams, you want to identify and eliminate waste, you want to make value flow at the pull demand of the customer. Um, when I look at pull, I think it's well underrated in a lot of companies. There's a lot of push going on. But the visual pull signals, which is a form of visual management, which we'll talk about, is a key ingredient into making um, a company profitable and efficient. So one of the chapters of a book that I'm writing on Southern Sensei Lessons in Lean Leadership 
if the bobber goes under, give it a yank, which is a visual trigger si signal if you've ever gone fishing. So we're going to talk about visual signals as well in visual management. Create or enhance process flexibility. How can people do more? What are people actually trained on? These questions can also be answered in visual management. Continuously improve in pursuit of perfection. We can always make things better. Involve associates. Create a visual management system. So that's really what we're going to key in on today as we discuss visual management. Do not reward overcoming. Really get to that root cause. Quit putting a Band-Aid on something. And number 10, don't fool yourself. You really need to think about this in a common sense approach. Competition feeds on our waste, and our goal is the relentless pursuit and elimination of waste. I'm sure, hopefully none of your offices look like this, but it's totally true. Why do I say competition feeds on our waste? The less waste we have, the more efficient we are. If I say um, you feed on your competition's waste as well, for instance, I can't produce the part in the time needed. Well, all I have to do, if I know that my customer is like this, I go up and say, I can produce the part in the time needed, and I'll make sure I deliver on it. So the less waste we have in our whole supply chain, um, the more efficient and the better we'll be as far as a company. So we feed on our competition's waste as well. If they can't produce in a, a cost-effective manner, uh, we can really beat those uh, beat those prices as well because of our prices and, and we've eliminated waste in our supply chain. The eight waste. I'm going to take a little a few minutes to really I always do this on webinars to really look at the eight waste because I can't reemphasize them enough. Stop downtime is one way you can look at the acronym of waste, but defects. Failure to meet the product specifications requires rework. So everybody, as you walk through your plant, you probably know what a defect is, something that doesn't meet the customer's value, customer specification. But in a visual management world, what I really want to see when I'm walking through is a clear distinction visually that um, the defects are separated from the good parts. I do not want to see a gray bin with good parts and a, and a gray bin with bad parts it can very easily be mixed up. So if you have a red bin system for defects, that's great. You can continue to make it obvious of good and bad. So that's really one big point in visual management. Also, defects in the office is anything that starts with re. Redo, rewrite, requote, rework, paperwork. Those kind of things are all defects. Why do you have to do it again? Why didn't we do it right the first time? How can we improve the process to improve how we do things and eliminate defects? Overproduction. Overproduction is when you're walking through and you see a big pile of inventory. You've overproduced. You only needed 10 parts, but you produced 20 parts. So visually, why do I see? Can I really see that you have more than you need? Um, if everything has a place and everything's in its place, if you have 20 parts and you only ha should have 10, it should be very obvious to you that you've had overproduction. So overproduction in the plant. Overproduction in the office, another example would be creating a 20-page report when the person you give the report to only looks at two or three of those pages. Can you go and see what the value is from the customer that's getting your report and do a one-page dashboard? That would be one way to reduce overproduction. Why are we doing things that are not necessary? Wait time. Wait, waiting is a big defect. Can you see people waiting on the lines or waiting in your production environment? Um, do we ever put our clothes in the washing machine and wait on those close to finish? I don't think so. We usually go do other things. But in a lot of cases in plants, we put parts in machines and we wait on it to finish. What can we do to be more efficient with our time and eliminate waiting? Are we waiting in the office for approvals? What does that process look like for approvals? Is it waiting in someone's inbox? Can we eliminate that waiting also in the office? Non-utilized people. 
failing to utilize pe people's full mental creative problem solving ability. When I look at this, I always ask myself, what are people trained on when I walk through a plant? Can I see this cross training chart? Can I see what people are trained on? Can they be trained on other things? What are we weak on because we don't have enough people trained on that particular process? So non-utilized people is another waste. You're really using their creativity, using their ideas in the office or in the, in the plant floor. Transportation waste, moving the parts, materials, tools, everything around the plant. How many times do we pick up something? How far does it travel? If you ever flow your parts from the receiving dock all the way through the plant, all the way through the pro production processes to, back to shipping, how far does that part travel? It, it's a great thing to see, you know, that how can you eliminate the waste in transportation? And this is the same way in the office. Are people having to walk across the building to get to a fax machine when you can relocate things closer to where you need them? Um, also relocating tools closer to the machine where you need them. So think about transportation ways. Inventories. Inventory could, can be a result of overproduction. But I see inventory in two different ways in the plant. The first way is gallons of milk. So if you're producing gallons of milk instead of parts that you're producing now, how bad does your plant smell if, if it's milk sitting out there instead of other parts? Why, does not, why doesn't that inventory flow? How many times are you turning your inventory? Also, I see inventory as a wad of money. Uh, it used to be a Geico commercial with a wad of money with two eyes. And this is what I see as far as inventory sitting on a shelf. Inventory is money. If you reduce inventory from the shelf, you're actually filling your pockets full of money, which you can do other things with. Of course, there's the right sizing of inventory because you, you don't want to delay opportunity. But, you know, if you can reduce inventory to the right size, then you can really save a lot of money and have things flow a lot better through your plant. Inventories in the office. If you have over 100 emails in your inbox, think of that as inventory. How much more efficient would you be if you had less than 100 emails in your inbox and you had subfiles where everything was located and you could find things a lot quicker? How many emails do you open up and automatically delete because it's, you shouldn't be getting those emails? That's wasting your time as well. So think about inventory as emails in your inbox as well. Motion waste. I always think about elbows when I think about motion waste. Can you see how far people are reaching for what they need? Why isn't everything that they need right there where they need it? Or are they having to reach over here and reach over here? Motion waste, I think about elbows. Extra processing, extra effort, time, materials, and energy that adds no value from the perspective of the customer. That's why it's so important to understand the customer's needs and right up front when you're doing your R&D work and really try to understand what you're designing into the product, what the customer actually needs. Why have five different screws, different types of screws in a light fixture when you can simply put the light fixture together with bendable tabs? There's a lot of different things you can look at to really save time, save energy, and reduce extra processing as a waste. So briefly, I know um, we went over the eight wastes, but think about visual management is a key tool in eliminating a lot of these eight wastes. And we'll talk about that as we talk about visual management. When I look at a company, I want you to understand how I look at your company. Your company has different big branches at the top which is your sales channels to market. It could be a retail channel, it could be an industrial channel, it could be a military or government channel. These are the big branches which resolve into your value streams that lead to the end user, which is the leaves of the tree. When I think about your company and your four walls of your company, 
I think about the trunk of the tree. You have your customer service, your salesman, all your value streams, your production, all within the trunk of the tree. Then the very base of the tree is your suppliers, their root structure. Do you have 2,000 roots or do you have 500 roots that you, you can strengthen? So how do you grow your tree if you don't work with all of these areas in your tree? And suppliers are a real key. I did a ton of supplier development activity and, and really visualizing uh, and creating pull with visual trigger systems uh, with suppliers. And if you think about probably more than half of your revenue goes right into the base of the tree into the suppliers because you're paying for materials. So one penny saved that you're working with your suppliers and you come up with a way to save a penny on a product that goes directly to margin, that goes directly to profit. If your supplier can't deliver on time, you can't deliver on time. If your supplier has bad quality, you have bad quality. So I want you to think about the entire lean enterprise because it's not just inside your four walls. It also deals with your suppliers and also your channels to market. In order to grow this tree, you have to really work on all of, all of those particular things. Uh, the top four is ones I want to go over today. Man, machine, material, and method, the four M's. That's the way I think when I think about anything walking through a plant. When I walk through a plant, I think about man. How do they know they've had a good day today? It's a key question. I always like to ask people on the plant floor. How do you know you've had a good day today? Did you make your numbers? Did you um, have any quality issues? Did you have any safety issues? Um, how do you know you've had a good day today? So man is the key of the four M's and really understanding, and we'll talk about visual metrics or key performance indicators in order to really help people visually see how they how they know they've had a good day today communication systems machine when I think about machine walking through a plant I think about preventative maintenance how do I know when the last time the oil was changed on that machine or when the filter was changed on that machine one good example of this is when you get your car oil changed um, they put a sticker in your windshield and it says when the last time the oil was changed, uh, when you need to change it next. And so either you have some way to communicate this either through electronically or you use visual management. Also when I look at machine gauges, how do I know when they're out of range, they're in the red zone? Is there a translucent sticker that you can put on those gauges to really visually see where the machine should be running? So those are the kind of things we should look at in machine. Material, I think about flow and pull. Can you see a bunch of inventory piled up or can you see that flow and pull as it runs through the plant? Mr. Niwa was one of my favorite senseis with uh, Shigejitsu and I always remember him saying, if you hear the word supply chain, I want you to think of it a little bit differently. So if you take a chain or a gold chain off your neck back in the 70s. I don't believe I had one, but if you take a gold chain off your neck and you put it on a table and you push the chain, what happens to the chain? It bunches up in different spots. And think of that as waste. There's no clear direction if you push the chain and it bunches up and you see a lot of waste. And that could be inventory piled up in different places. It can be different things. If you pull the chain, Every link in the chain reacts to the next link that it's pulled against. So there's no bunching up, it's got clear direction, and you've actually, uh, you know, have a clear supply chain. So it's all about pull. So when you think about chain, it's about pull. So we'll be talking quite a bit about pull trigger systems, Kanban, also visual trigger systems, and um, many different replenishment techniques that are visual. When you talk about method, you think about what is the standard work? How do I create that product the same way every time? Does night shift create it the same way as day shift? And what do we use? And that would be, what's the process? Is it documented? Is it communicated with pictures, with 
flow charts, with words. How do you communicate that and how can you improve that visual management in improving your standard work and your process maps? So we'll show you a good many of those as well. In the office, it's the same way. Man uh, could be communication. I, I still ask, um, how do you know what's your key metrics in the office? How do they know they've had a good day? How do they know they've had a good week? Um, metrics, are, are they windshield or rearview mirror? We'll talk about that. Is everything that you measure happening last month? We did this in production last month. We did this in sales last month. Or do you have some windshield metrics, which is something that you audit so you can prevent something from happening? Uh, maybe you audit your processes so you're improving your processes and you're eliminating waste in your processes so you don't have bad results later. So there are different, I would at least have one windshield metric for all of the KPIs to really work on in each area. Missing. What's the missing opportunities or gaps that we need to close in the office? Um, it, this could be part of a portfolio of products. What's missing that could really give us a, an advantage over our competition? Or maybe our sales teams really are asking for this and it would give you a ton more uh, revenue if you had this particular uh, missing opportunity filled already. Method could be also What's the process for closing the books and accounting? Do you have that visually displayed? What's the process? Do you have your top processes mapped out? And so I really focus around playbooks and around process mapping in, in the office areas. What's in your golf bag? So when you think about lean, I want you to think about a golf bag of different clubs. Lean is the bag itself. It holds many different clubs. If you look at this one, it basically has a strategy deployment, process mapping, playbooks, value stream mapping, visual management, and many different tools in the lean bag of, of a golf bag. You can also say strategy deployment should be your driver. It should be the first thing you tee off with. Uh, you should know where you're going as a company. Uh, what's the next three years hold for you as a company? Um, understanding what your strategy is could be the first club you pull out of the bag and hit it 300 yards, look down the road, down the golf course uh, 300 yards, as well as looking through your company three years in the future. Root cause countermeasure probably is the uh, pitching wedge that you use to get out of trouble like a sand trap. I use this quite a bit. When I play golf, well, very, very rarely, but you know, it's something to help you get out of trouble and eliminate the problem that you're in. And so we're going to go through visual management as one of the tools that we're going to talk about. And this one is the visual management tool. I'm usually behind a tree. I can't see the, uh, the flag or the golf hole. So I need that club to help me get clear visibility of where I'm going really understand what I need. So I, I call it my uh, visual management club is the one that's behind the tree. I always like to start off with this um, because visual management helps clear up confusion and we have a ton of confusion throughout most companies. The first picture shows how the customer explained it this could be a conversation over lunch with a salesman that's trying to write this down on a napkin, uh, but the customer's explaining what they need. So how the customer explained it. The next is how the project leader understood it. Next is how the engineer designed it. Next is how the programmer wrote it. How the sales executive described it. How the project was documented. What operations installed how the customer was billed, how the help desk supported it, and what the customer really needed. So as you'll see in this presentation, visual management helps you get closer in understanding and clarity uh, with the customer and throughout the operation. How do you really clarify things? And we'll really see a picture's worth a thousand words. And um, what if this had started off with a picture with a, 
from the customer to the salesman, or we got close there, we would not have ended up with these other scenarios. So a picture is worth a thousand words. It's a visual world. Needless to say, I think anybody that came to work today used visual management to get to work today. They, they use road signs. You use um, lines on the road. What if we didn't have any parking space lines? Everybody would be parked in different directions. Um, what if we didn't have stop signs? People would have a lot more wrecks. Think about your dashboard in your car. You know exactly how much gas you have. You know how fast you're going. And some of the dashboard is things we rarely use, but how hot is the uh, engine? Uh, what's the battery gauge? Those kind of things. There's some really important visuals, visuals, and then there's also visuals on your dashboard that you just refer to that are meaningful as well. What is a visual workplace? Running the floor without saying a word. I haven't seen too many of these plants, maybe one or two, but it's very difficult, as we all know, to run the plant without saying a word. That is the extreme visual management. Um, we'll be sharing some slides with you from SureSeal, one of the plants that I work with. Uh, Nick Wills um, really worked with me on this. We did a lot of things. It's one of the most visual plants in West Cincinnati, and if you ever get a chance or you're in that area, it's a great benchmark site to see SureSeal because they've really put a lot of effort into visual management and really communicating better for all of their employees. So visual management, then let's first take the visual perception of your customers. What is your visual customer's impression? I've seen million dollar deals fall through or, or get approved because of the number one sales tool of any organization and that's their plant floor. A customer will come to your plant and they'll go to your competition's plant and they'll get an instant impression visually of who's got it together, who has the best processes, who has the most organization, who do you think that's more world class for me to work with. So the visual customer's impression really starts when they come and visit your plant, many of you, I'm sure, have customer visits, but you need to think differently when you have a customer come and visit. So we're going to talk about visual management in regards to a customer comes to your, your place of business. First impression area, wow area. So the first place that a customer comes and, and visualizes your facility, think about it, it would actually be the parking lot. They pull up in the parking lot. What do they see? Do they see where visitors should park? Do they see cigarette butts and trash around? Is the grass cut or does it look world class? If it's a lighting company, do all the lights work around the plant? Does it look like a place that you even want to go into? Does it look like a world class facility? So that's their first impression is when they pull into that parking lot and look in the parking lot. The next first impression area is the lobby. So let's think about the lobby visually. Does it look like a dentist office or can you tell that actual production is being, what's being made there in that particular facility? A lot of times I'll go into a lobby and what do I see? Uh, tan walls, some plastic shrubs in the corner and a couple chairs and some magazines, but I have no idea what they produce there from visually looking at the lobby or who works there or the machine capabilities that they have there. If you turn that around, some of the better ones I've seen will have a display of the things, the capabilities that they have, samples that they've created. They'll have visuals on the wall of different um, certificates that they've earned or honors that they've earned as a plant. They may even have a whole team picture that they take of the whole company uh, just really highlighting the people there at the plant. So there's many different things that you can put in that lobby but that is the second first impression area as you go through the plant. The next first impression area that a customer gets is actually in the conference room. 
You go into the conference room. How is it organized? Does everything have a place? Is everything in its place? Um, can you do you have everything you need to visually communicate, like a whiteboard or other things? So the conference room. Then you're probably walking through from the conference room around to the um, where the office areas. So office areas, can you tell what they're doing? Can you visually see what they're doing? Uh, are people smiling? That's a visual form of communication. Then I want everyone that's on this call, if you're with a facility, I want you to take three steps into the plant factory floor. Those first three steps into the plant operation is the key steps that you should always stop and look around because those first three steps are the first impression of how the operation is running in your facility. So if you don't have a good first impression, that's a great place to start. After you go three steps, then I would go and do the parade route. Where do you normally take visitors? Start with the parade route, walk around the parade route, understand visually what a customer is seeing. Um, are they seeing waste like inventory? Are they seeing different? You can visually see a lot of different waste as you take that tour. And we may not realize this, but it's a good time to start visually improving a work area. 5S culture. Everything has a place. Everything's in its place. Uh, closed loop systems, ownership. I really think a lot about ownership. I'll always go to the HR manager's bulletin board. And when I go to the HR manager's bulletin board and I see the Thanksgiving poster up and it's actually July, and I wonder, and then I know exactly why that's the case, because everybody owns the bulletin board or nobody owns the bulletin board. If you take the HR manager's picture and their name and put it in the bottom right hand corner of the bulletin board, it'll always be updated. There's something about ownership. If my picture's on something, I'm going to have more pride in it. I know who owns it. If something's messed up, I know who to go talk to as well. So ownership and accountability can be a simple visual as far as having someone's picture on a bulletin board, who owns the bulletin board. So closed loop system, who owns it? Visual management, we talk, we're talking about. 4M control, we talked about the 4Ms. Um, root cause countermeasure system. It's one thing to identify the problems. What systems do you have in place to really correct those problems? Measurement feedback to the cell level. How do the people know they've had a good day yesterday? How do the people know they've had a good week? How do the people know they've had a good month? So we're going to talk about that. And that all rolls up from the from the operator or cell level all the way up to the plant level. Visual evidence of ownership and accountability we've already talked about. So that's one thing that customers really thinking and in, in seeing things through their eyes is a good way to start your visual management program. I put a visual management closed loop system here, Plan Do Check Act. Most of you are familiar with Plan Do Check Act. But in this process, I always think about first, visual management has six key elements um, that we'll be going over, and I'll be showing you several examples of those. One is um, organization. How are things organized? Does everything have a place? Do you have shadow boards? Do you have other things in place? Uh, safety. What are your visuals and safety? I question how do I know that. Um, there's been an accident in the plant. How do I know what to do if there's an accident, if there's a fire drill? Quality in the plant, quality visual management, what's critical to quality in the eyes of the customer? Do you have uh, visual standard operating procedures? Do you have visual pro uh, processes? Um, visual management as far as productivity, really understanding your productivity through key performance indicators uh, or metrics. Creation of pull or pull trigger systems is also a key area of visual management. How do I know uh, what to do next or when to do it? And that's using visual trigger systems. Uh, motivation and metrics. Uh, motivation, how do we 
really emphasize that the people in this plant are the most important thing to our culture. It, you can't run the machines without great people. You can't run the company without great people. So how are you motivating those people to build this, build your company and to make it the best that it can be? So let's start off with plan. We standardize. We mock up. We make sure that we're ready to implement things before we just go implement them. So there should be standard formats. There should be color coding consistency. And teams should get together and mock it up. One person's project does not get the same respect from the rest of the team as a team's project. So if the team helps develop these visuals, it's going to stick a lot better and it's going to really make a difference. Do. After you plan it, you implement the visual and create some non-negotiables. I always like the word non-negotiables. We'll show you a little bit more about that in next. But there should be some non-negotiables about your visual management system. It should clearly be updated, always updated. That could be one visual management. If it's not updated, you're not following your non-negotiables. Ownership, there should be an owner or else it's going to fall through the cracks. If someone leaves, who's the next owner? But you should have some ownership. So let's first plan it, then do it, put it into action, and then check it. How do you check your visuals? Making sure you do gimbal walks. How do you make sure you check those visuals? And, and the most important part of auditing that system is the to-do list. I can do a 5S audit or a visual management audit and tell everybody they got a 4.0, it doesn't mean anything. The to-do list is the most important part of the audit because it tells you why you got the score you did and what you have to do to get a better score. So make sure you check, but only if you have a to-do list because numbers or guesstimates aren't going to really work in, in operations. People just ignore those. To-do list really is the definitely the key thing in checking your improvements. Act. So if you have problems, you have a to-do list, then you want to continue to improve and you continue to work on those to-do list things. You do more communication, you do more training, and then you continue in this cycle. You plan again, uh, do, check, and act. So it's a visual management closed loop system to make sure that what you do sustains because there's no worse waste than spending a week doing a Kaizen event or an improvement event. You make the changes and then a week later everything goes back to the way it was. So you make sure that you have a, a real system around it so that you sustain your gains uh, with plan, do, check, and act. One of the we talked about the different elements around the store that I just showed you. So organization is one of them. One of the first things I want to talk about is 5S and uh, three second rule and how visual management works with that. Can you find everything you need within three seconds? It's a great question. It's a great question to ask your folks. You know, if you have an area that's totally unorganized or your office is totally unorganized, can you find everything you need in three three seconds. It's a really good standard to put, put down as an improvement. One of the first things that before implementing a 5S program or if you've already implemented a 5S program is really teaching people to see waste that's all around them. And so rattlesnake hunting, I just I did a different webinar on rattlesnake hunt, but I really think visually it's a great way to see waste and to help people learn to see waste. And that's by finding a problem like a rattlesnake that might bite you. It could be a cord on the floor that you're going to trip over. It could be a uh, oil that's, you don't have any oil in your motor. Anything that might really bite you in the future is a rattlesnake. And we have teams that go out and hunt rattlesnakes and they take a picture of those rattlesnakes and they put them up on the board and then the next two days they kill the rattlesnake by fixing the problem and putting it up as the after, so you have a before and after. So the rattlesnake and the rattlesnake is dead because we fixed the problem. So rattlesnake hunting is a, a definitely a great way to eliminate the low-hanging fruit or to rejuvenate a 5S program, and um, that's one. Of the, and it really starts getting things in order. 
The other part of a 5S program that you should be aware of is that there should be zero no man's land in your plant. If you point at any square inch of the plant floor, who owns it, what team owns it, or who owns it so that we know it's got an owner and it's going to be taken care of. So we would definitely you need a map of the plant just like a fire evacuation map. You can overlay this with different colors and create different teams so that there's zero no man's land in a 5S system. Um, and so you can see this a little bit better. So this team owns this particular section, other teams own other sections, so you have zero no man's land and you have a responsibility map and people can see this. It's, it's posted so people can see their area of responsibility. You've got to have fun with visuals also. At SureSale, we had the Golden Flag Award, the best 5S in the, in, in the plant. So they get the Golden 5S Award. The worst 5S for the month, we get the Black Toilet Seat Award. So people didn't mind not winning the, the best, but they didn't want the Black Toilet Seat in the area for a month. And you just have fun with it. Change it up, make it your own program, but have fun with the visual management and improving and motivating employees to, to make things better. Cleaning stations. How many times do you see a broom laying in a corner or laying on a half a million dollar piece of equipment? A broom, a cleaning supply is a tool just like a wrench. Why isn't it on a shadow board? Why doesn't it have a home? These are some of the questions that I would ask. So create a cleaning cart or cleaning station. Have everything have a place. Everything's in its place. You don't have to waste your time finding what you need. The other thing that I'd recommend is don't visually hide things. So as we talk about visual management, what happens when you have doors on a cabinet? If you have doors on a cabinet, all the junk goes in the, in the cabinet. It's a mess. You can't find what you need, so take the doors, remove the doors from your cabinets. It's definitely a recommendation. Um, the Champions Club, we went to the Raytheon Missile Systems out in Arizona. Very lean facility. You want your missile plants to be very lean, and they were very lean. They asked us at lunch if we had any recommendations, and um, my only recommendation was to take the doors off the cabinets out on the plant floor. And they looked at me for a minute, then they started shaking their head. They know exactly what I mean. Because once you have doors and you're hiding waste, you cannot visually see the waste behind those doors. It prevents you from being organized and being more efficient. So take the, remove the cabinet doors from your cabinets. Everything has a place. Everything's in its place. Uh, again, take the doors off your cabinets here. Um, Make sure you shadow board your tools. We even went so far as putting the McMaster car number in case we lost a tool. We also took a picture of the wrench, laminated it, and put it behind. Instead of just drawing a line like a shadow, we actually put a picture behind the tool so you could actually see exactly what tool belongs there. And you can do this with colored paper so it really stands out like a yellow but it's actually got the picture of the tool. It just makes it a little bit better. Another visual manage. this was a SMED card or, or a changeover card in a plant. And we, we did this cart. We went from two hours changeover time to 20 minutes changeover time. And a lot of it was because people were trying to find the tools they needed. People were trying to find the parts that they needed. We even put an acrylic holder and we had a checklist, so the, the black checklist is what you do while the machine's running, and the white checklist is what you do while the machine you know, is down. So that there's a reference guide there, visual reference guide, to make sure we take care of everything. You don't want to put the machine totally back together and forget one item, but if you have a, a visual checklist, it really helps those kind of things. Everything has a place, everything's in its place. Even dies. Where do the dies belong? Here we made a flip so you could see that this die that was belonged here is actually in the cell. Or it's back in the rack or it's getting refurbished. So we had a little flip card. Not much expense, but instead of looking for things all over the place, 
it was very easy to, to visually see where those things are. Another thing that I saw at, at Neptune in Tallahassee, Alabama, was actually if someone were to check out a tool or check out a quality instrument, there was a library card holder and they had a, their picture, picture so that they could put their picture extra um, ID tag into that holder so everybody would know who had that particular item. And then when we returned it, just like a library book, then you could take your picture and put it back up on the wall. So it was a really great visual to see the checkout of um, different quality instruments or dies or whatever. Before and after, let's, you need to think very clearly about visuals and make sure that you put tools at the point of use. If you put all of these tools across the room, you're actually adding to the waste. In this case, these tools were all over the place and it actually one of them fell into a motor. It burned up a $500 motor so they just put a piece of plastic over it. But the real problem is you don't want tools on your work surface. You want tools on the shadow board where it's very easy to find what you need. And once we did this, the, the operators and techs, they really enjoyed um, this particular visual management tool. What would happen if there were no lines on the floor here in this cell uh, for heavy presses for bending metal. You would have everything everywhere. It would probably be a safety concern. You would be tripping over things. But just by using some simple lines and understanding where things belong, it really gave some clarity to the, the employees on where things should be. We also have a cube here with our plus Q-dip. We'll show you some different examples of that in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. Area and cell world uh, class non-negotiables. I'm not going to read all these to you, but I want to go through a few of them. You should have a plant non-negotiable list. This really helps people understand clearly what the company expects. For instance, no long-term handwritten signs. So instead of writing trash on a cardboard and putting it over the trash can, let's go ahead and uh, type it up if it's going to be there longer than a week and laminate it because if it's not laminated then it's going to curl up, look brown, look bad in just a matter of time. <coughs> Other non-negotiables, no wires on the floor, pallet jacks, carts, forklifts are painted, not scratched up. Uh, some of the plants that I've worked in, I call them the demolition derby forklifts. It really shows that we do not care about our forklift. There's not a square inch on the forklift without a scratch. So just by making sure you take care of your forklifts. What if, what if the forklift was actually painted and then in the morning meeting you saw it had a big scratch? It might alert you that somebody ran into something that could cause an accident in the future. One of the other ones, color coding consistency must exist. What do the different colors in your plants mean? And I'll show you an example of that. No flat surfaces. You know, if you have a locker and somebody puts a coffee cup on top of it, it's going to be up there for two weeks. Let's put a lean-to roof on those flat surfaces, making sure that nothing is out of place. So those are some non-negotiables. Safety examples. As I look at safety, I always like to walk in a plant and see if I can see where every fire extinguisher is in the plant. A lot of times the sign is on the other side of the pole and so you can't see the sign. But if you paint, if the pole is painted red all the way to the ceiling or if you have a red stripe all the way to the ceiling, you can pretty much see where every fire extinguisher is located. And you don't want to take time to find a fire extinguisher when you need it. So it's very, that's a visual indicator. This is the OSHA standards, and a lot of the plants I'm working in are actually using these standards as far as how they're marking their floors as well as marking their racks. For instance, yellow is uh, passive egress or aisleways. Um, you have red, stands for defects, red tag. Blue, materials, manufacturing raw materials. Green is finished goods, and you can go through the different list. You'll be getting a copy of this. Uh, um, this is just a really good example, and OSHA is OSHA's guideline for colors, so 
it's a lot better to use theirs than to try to reinvent the wheel. How do you know you've had an accident? This particular crash dummy, which showed exactly where the accident occurred down below, was what happened and the root cause countermeasure, the countermeasure so that we don't have the accident again. But if we have an accident in the plant, I really want to know about it. Another example of this, and also how many hours have you gone without a, a lost time accident? It also can be a matter of having some fun competition with that. Quality visuals, critical to quality points, non-conforming clarity. This is in Mexico in a foundry, and um, we really wanted to make it clear this is good, this is bad, so we put a big display out in the plant so everyone could really understand clearly what good parts look like, what bad parts look like. So clarity around quality is very important. Um, quality action request station is a sure seal. We actually had this so people that notice quality issues can have some way to take action against those to make sure it's taken care of. Using cones to signify something's on hold or approved in receiving inspection and even standard work in playbooks. We have them in different color sleeves so that when we change over we can change it to the different color of the particular standard work that we're running so we know everybody's following the right standard work. Visual standard operating procedures, I think pictures are, are critical. Um, you know the exact details, the picture, pointing out the details, and I've even seen some software where you actually have a flow chart uh, down the side uh, as, you, as you see these standard operating procedures. Another great visual management tool is visual standard work. Creation of pull. We talked about pull versus push. So what are the trigger points and how are they defined in your plan? Making products flow from the customer pool. This is a particular pull system. We even have a signal here. Once the pallet is on this roller, gets past this signal, then that signifies the upstream department to continue to produce more product. Um, flow, making sure things flow first in, first out, and then creating visual trigger, trigger signals to reorder is really important. Scheduling boards, understanding what's being run next, what's the priority that needs to be run next, uh, being able to move that priority in the schedule so that everybody can understand what is the priority on the scheduling of products. This looks like a stick uh, with green, yellow, and red. It signifies when the pallets get to this level, uh, we need to reorder pallets. But what we ended up doing, we actually got a webcam that looked at this stick and we had our supplier of pallets check in every day so that they could automatically bring us the pallets that we need instead of having for us to do anything at all. So basically they would check their webcam every morning, they would know what pallets to bring and how many to bring, how many times do you end up with two truckloads of pallets and you don't need that many. In this case we would actually just get the amount of pallets that we need by them looking at the webcam. Making sure everything's labeled. We actually created a Kaizen cart so you have everything you need to do to do improvements, but even better is that everything was labeled. We actually had trigger signals to reorder and replenish um, supplies. So take it to the extreme because you're not really taking it to extreme, you're just making things a lot more efficient. Kanban events, making sure everything flows. We actually have kitting carts that we would go through and then it would trigger a Kanban signal to reorder those particular parts. Everything has a place, everything's in its place, so it created very easy to, to kit parts with low volume and high mix um, production. Here's another example of Kanban where we have things flowing in first in first out and then it triggers your cards and then those cards would go on to a reorder board so that it would actually continue to trigger the pull of the product parts from the supplier. Visual manpower motivators. 
I always like this, you know, why aren't people not engaged in plant? They're just doing what they have to do to make the money, to make the paycheck. Well, that's part of it. The other part is you want them engaged to make sure that they're working for your company because they know it's a great place to work. They have a feeling of ownership. They have a feeling of pride with what they do. And so visual management is a key part of that. This is actually uh, Batesville Casket, their wall of fame. Um, I do a lot of wall of fame, so every time someone has an improvement, they put the before picture, the after picture, and then um, who, was, who improved that, and we put it on the wall of fame. It's something great to see as a customer when you walk in here and you see how many people have had something to do with the improvements that have gone on in the plant. And also, if I'm an operator or employee here at the plant, I kind of want my picture on the wall of fame because I've had something to do with the improvement here. Um, values, we would actually have drawings at SureSeal if people demonstrated the company values. And so we really tried to elevate the positive instead of always criticizing the negative. So if someone is actually portraying the values, you could write up a, a card, put it on the values board, and then we would do a drawing at the end of the month. My personal space is actually a wall at SureSeal. It shows people's hobbies and, and all kinds of things to, so that they're more of a family uh, to the plant. This is a, actually a passport at the Duha Group in Canada. They have a passport and visual management as far as their training program goes. You can see that each person has a passport. It really shows you what they've been trained on and how they progress in their training uh, throughout the, the year. Ownership, showing a warehouse responsibility. This person owns this particular rack in the warehouse, um, creating that ownership. Putting pictures on lockers, understanding that this person owns this is their locker. If someone's got a, a sandwich in there for three weeks and it's smelling really bad, you kind of want to know whose locker it is. But it gives them more of an ownership of that. Key performance indicators. So quality by key customer is an example. So we actually have a queue for each of their top customers so that we can really visually see you know, the returns that are coming in at, at SureSeal and you know what we really need to focus on uh, to really elevate the quality of each key customer. Plant key KPI boards are key performance indicators, safety, quality, productivity, delivery, quick indicator. So I just want to see, okay, this is great, but I want to see what we're doing wrong. Who owns that metric? The trend chart, the Pareto chart, and the root cause countermeasure for safety, for quality, for productivity, and for delivery. And that's a plant board. This is a plant board at Bath Fitter. They did a great job with plus Q dip. Safety is the safety cross Q D I P. So each letter has 31 days in it. And it's as simple as coloring it in green if you made the goal. I didn't have an accident, so it goes green. It, I colored in red if I didn't make the goal. And then I have my root cause countermeasure below it. And it's a very great visual or key performance indicators. They, uh, at Habasit in Atlanta, they actually implemented a monitor inside, some things that they wanted to go over all the time and some things they wanted to see visually. This is a cube whiteboard, safety on one side, quality, productivity, delivery, all the way around. E is environmental health and safety, quality, delivery, and cost. And so one thing about don't let visual create waste for you, make sure they're quick and easy and make sure that you can just color them in green or color them in red. Another example of plus Q-dip at SureSeal and the hour by hour results, uh, production results so I know how I'm doing throughout the day. And this is an up close plus Q-dip uh, visual. So safety, quality, delivery, cost or inventory productivity. Even in the plants, um, in the office areas, this is a 
what is your metrics for the accounting, HR, all of those different things. So you really want to understand that and who owns it and be able to really quickly write up um, good and bad. Another visual for production is each day we would say how much we shipped out. For every 10,000 we ship, we'd put a ping pong ball in here and it would show you how close to your ship goal for each month you are. And this was in the lunchroom. Uh, great visual management to show you where you are for the month. Other visuals, we did a Lego layout at Sure Seal down to the people, the trash cans, the machines, really showing uh, the whole flow of the plant. And this is a wow factor as well. It's a visual wow factor, so I can really see how things are going to change, how things are, how things flow through a plant by using Legos. We did this for a distribution center. This is a 500,000 square foot distribution center with all the racks on a ping pong table. And then we have monthly, each month, the different Kazans that we're going to do so people can understand what we're going to do and when we're going to work in their area. Sales project board, this is a pipeline of sales, each order that comes through. Um, and then we have stickers on it, 10 to 40, 40 to 100, and greater than 100,000. So you can kind of see from opportunity to quote all the way through, did we win the job, did we lose the job? So visual pipeline boards are another good example. Hey, Mark. Yes. Um, yes. Just if I can chime in for just a minute. So to our audience, we've got 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Um, I know Mark has got some additional ideas to share with the group. So just a quick heads up. Uh, we've gotten some questions submitted from everybody. We're going to go probably a few minutes beyond 1 p.m. and then tackle a little bit of Q&A. So uh, just a quick uh, housekeeping announcement. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thank you. Trello, trytrello.com. It's a visual tool. It's very easy and free. be glad to help you with this if you ever want to. But it's my portal to my customers, so I actually – work with my customers. I can attach things to it uh, like PowerPoints and um, we may even invite you to a uh, webinar visual management Trello portal so you can try it out yourself. Project management boards, seeing how the project's flowing through instead of having to question different people all the time so you can visually see how your projects move. Other visuals, color coding your outlets so you know what breaker to go to. Uh, visual on all the MRO supplies, even visuals as far as TPM goes, having a clear cover instead of one that hides the waste. Lean helps you achieve your goals through total engagement and makes your putt a little easier. So I'm hoping that you've got a couple of good ideas and just really, really focus on the more visual your plan is, the more world class your plan is. The last picture is one that I took on vacation. This was taken, I usually ask people if they could guess where this was taken. This was taken in the kitchen of Alcatraz prison on my tour. So it's pretty important to know where these are at all times and so they use a visual management shadow board to really showcase where all that is. So the next uh, next step, um, be glad to help anyone on the webinar, but also we're doing a lean boot camp in Atlanta, uh, 299 a person. We also have discounts, and it's at the 1818 Club in Duluth, and this will be held um, on, on June 28th of this month. We, we do several boot camps along about every other month. I'll do lean boot camps, as well as um, my old goal is to continue to help companies all over the U.S. and um, if there's anything else that I can do, I'll be glad to help you with it. Scott, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, Mark. And to our audience, again, uh, we've got three or four questions already submitted. Uh, happy to hear your, your questions or your observations. Uh, just use the chat function or the raise your hand icon and we'll get there by his questions. Okay, so Mark, we've got a couple questions already submitted. Uh, this question comes from Amanda. In an office environment, what successful visual management approaches have you seen? Um, two key things that offices need is really to focus on what their goals are for each department in their offices 
and to really map out their processes to understand what the processes are so you can audit your processes and improve them. That's, that's the, in accounting as well as customer service or wherever. And a lot of times I'll roll these processes and information into what I call a playbook. And that playbook is a visual tool to make sure that everybody's on the same page as far as their standard work, as far as reference materials. Even we put um, acronyms in the back to define acronyms for new employees and playbooks in different office environments. <clears throat> Terrific. Uh, second question comes from Troy, uh, Mark. What's your opinion on standardizing a visual management approach within the different departments of the company? I always like I always liked it when a CEO can go from department to department and see that it's the same structure. They don't have to figure out the structure, and you know, for a half hour, they can actually see what's in the visual management tool. So it is better to synchronize and standardize your your visual management, but also knowing that each area is going to be unique in some ways. But for instance, the plus Q dip is a really easy way to standardize the different departments in a, in a plant. Terrific. Uh, next question comes from Brantley. Uh, Mark, in your experience, what are one or two key mistakes to avoid when implementing visual management? Um, make sure that if people are not updating things and, and different visual management tools are not being used, don't fool yourself thinking that it's there. It may not be good to keep it up there. I would take down things that aren't working and work with a team to make things work again. If you start seeing things that are out of date, it's either an ownership issue or it's not valuable to the team that it's being represented for. It's for that team not to show. Another thing is when I walk through a plant and I say, visual management turn toward the aisleways and not turn toward the people doing the job, it's a mistake because those visual management tools are not for the customers, they're for the people working in the sales. So make sure that you're not doing it for show, you're doing it to become world class. Great point. Uh, final question today, Mark, comes from Richard. In your opinion, what is the biggest hurdle in implementing a lean management system in an organization that has had no exposure to lean thinking? Um, the biggest hurdle to overcome would be making sure you're not doing it to them, but you're doing it with them. I believe there needs to be some, you need to create pull not only in your material flow, but you also need to create pull in the lean culture that you're trying to set up. If you don't get people engaged and if you don't create a pull that they see that things can be better, um, then it starts falling and it's hard to sustain. So you really need that engagement, that culture change. And um, everybody doesn't have to be on board at first, but you know, if you're not, if you're, you're really implementing a good lean culture, everybody will want to be on board because, you know, or they'll get left behind. So it's, it's a real key to create pull in this system, make it fun, make it challenging, make it worthwhile, make it valuable to the employees. How much frustration can you eliminate by having things where they belong, in a, like in a visual management shadow board? How much frustration can you eliminate from the people on the floor. And when you start eliminating a lot of that frustration, you'll really start seeing the gains uh, for the whole company. Good answer to a great question. And I'm sure a question like that, uh, Mark, you'd welcome to have a, a sidebar conversation with Richard. So uh, as you see there on the slide in front of everybody, uh, Mark, I think what he's great about, a couple things. First off, comparing notes, having a cup of coffee, and really you know, listening to folks uh, where they are in their lean journey. So uh, many companies like, uh, like last question spoke to are near the beginning of their journey and still trying to figure out their approach. Um, and other companies are well down, well down their journey. And, and yet we saw some ideas uh, from Mark's uh, 
uh, experiences here today. So, but he's a great resource. Uh, also, we want to make sure everyone's aware of some of the free lean resources that you can find at uh, Mark's website, which is uh, leanapplication.com. Uh, I tell you, Mark is a content machine. So there's there's a variety of books, flip guides, some practical tools to, that that hopefully will help your organization uh, continue to improve and, and make it easier. Finally, I uh, want to thank our audience for joining us today. Again, we will be sending out the uh, PDF version of the deck today along with the recording uh, from today's webinar. But we want to invite you to, to take part of uh, some of our upcoming events. We've got, we continue to offer uh, free webinars, which are part of our, um, all these events are part of our, uh, again, our leadership, our Talent, Talent Stream Leadership Academy, which is really, uh, it focuses on providing low cost and no cost uh, opportunities for organizations to help develop their people. It's such a huge need out there in the marketplace for that. So we invite you to join us for upcoming webinars. Our Lean Boot Camp, as Mark spoke to on June 28th in Duluth, we've got a leadership boot camp coming up on July 29th, also in the Atlanta area. And all of the details on these events can be found at talentstreamstaffing.com. Uh, Mark, before we wrap things up, any final comments to share? Any final thoughts? No, uh, you know, I'm passionate about visual management and I just want to continue to encourage. These are just a few of the slides and you can see I kind of went over, I apologize, but I'm very passionate about visual management and really clearly understanding what's going on in a plant and in a company um, throughout every aspect of the company. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, and thank you to our audience. We hope to see you again. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody.